Hey everyone, how's it going? Before I've stated how important it is to know how to derive a lot of the equations that you will use in physics. And the reason for this is because you're not always going to remember every equation that you come by, but if you remember the basic concepts that you're trying to find, it's a whole lot easier to derive the equation than trying to fight your memory juggling all the information. So if you're lost, you at least know where to start and you can point yourself in the right direction. So today I'm going to go over these equations of kinematics are equations of motion in one dimension. These are equations you will see in physics when studying simple mechanics. Something to keep in mind is that these equations are special cases for more of the general laws and that they only apply when the acceleration is constant. And when I go through the derivation, I will use V final. But just note, when asked to find the velocity, it's always the final velocity for that situation. You also want to learn the relationship between the position, velocity, and acceleration. We're going to use these relationships to derive the equation, so I want you to see it now so that you don't get thrown off. Now the acceleration is going to be the second derivative of the position uh, function, which is also going to be the derivative of the velocity. Now velocity can be re represented as dx over dt, which the velocity is going to be the first derivative of the position function. But there's a special relationship with the acceleration to both the position and the velocity, and we're going to need to understand this relationship right here. We want to, we're going to later want this equation here, uh, the velocity times dv over dx. Uh, so this equation right here is going to be very, or this relationship is going to be very important for us to understand. So let's go ahead and see how we can get those kinematic equations. We're going to first start with that first relationship. So we're going to have acceleration equals dv over dt. Since acceleration is a constant, it's going to be a whole lot easier for us to integrate to work ourselves backwards to get the equations that we need. So what we're going to do is move dt to both sides. So we're going to have a dt equals dv. And now what we want to do is integrate. And we're going to integrate both sides. And how you want to integrate, so if you have dv here, you're going to integrate between v initial and v final. And since a acceleration is a constant, we're going to be integrating from t. So t when t is 0 to some other time t. Now, when dealing with time, you're always going to do your initial time as zero. That's going to be the minimum uh, value. With every other variable, you're always going to do t initial to t final. So keep note of that. And when we integrate, what we're going to get is a t from zero to t equals v from v naught to v final. So when we plug this in, what we're really going to get here is acceleration times t minus acceleration 0 equals v final minus v initial, and this is going to be our initial, um, or this is going to be from just basic integral calculus. So we're going to go ahead and simplify this, and what we get is at equals v final minus v initial. So now if we solve for uh, the final velocity, and move the initial velocity over, what we get is v equals at 
plus the initial velocity. Or to put it in the same form, V naught plus acceleration times time. And this right here is our first equation. Now that was simple enough. So in order to find the second equation, we're actually going to start from the first equation that we found. And we're going to use the relationship for velocity that we discussed earlier. So velocity is going to be dx over dt. And we're going to set that equal to the initial velocity plus at. Now we're going to follow the same pattern that we did when we started with the acceleration. What we're going to do is move dt to, both, uh, to the other side here. So what we're going to end up with is dx equals the initial velocities plus acceleration times time. And then that's going to get multiplied by dt. And then what we want to do is integrate both sides here from the initial position to the final position. And I'm going to give myself some space here. From t equals zero to the final time. And then we will repeat doing our basic integrals. And what we're going to find here is the integral of dx is going to be x from the initial position to the final position. And that's going to equal the uh, initial velocity times t plus one half a t squared. From zero to t. And when we calculate this out, what we are going to get is x final minus x initial equals initial velocity times time plus one half a t square. So to get the final position, uh, all we're going to do is move the initial position to the other side. So what we're going to be left with is final position is equal to the initial position plus v naught times time plus one half a t squared. And just like that, we found our second equation. Okay, great. Remember how I said before that you're going to have to take special care and pay attention uh, to the relationship between the position, velocity, and acceleration? Uh, well, that's going to come into play now. Uh, remember that the velocity is a derivative of the position function, which is dx over dt, and acceleration is a derivative of the velocity dv over dt. And there's a special relationship that correlates to two, where the acceleration equals dx over dt times dv over dx. Now, the velocity can be seen here. Draw an arrow straight down. So this term right here is the velocity. So we're going to have acceleration equals the velocity times dv over dx. And what we're going to do is the same thing as before that we did with the previous two equations. 
is we're going to bring the DX to the other side and we're going to integrate and that's going to help get us our final equation. So what we're going to get here is acceleration times DX equals the velocity times DV and we're going to integrate both sides from x initial to x final. We're going to integrate this side from v initial to v final. Do our simple integration and we are going to get ax from x initial to x final and then that's going to equal one half v squared from v initial to v final. Pay special uh, attention to how that was done. Um, this is something that you go over um, in your physics course and this is just a basic integral. A lot of people get confused because they will just convert this dv straight to v, but it's also multiply, which means you also have to do your basic integral. So that's going to be one half v squared. And then if we go ahead and continue this, this is going to be a times x final minus x initial, which is going to equal one half v final squared minus v initial squared. And what we want to do is to get rid of this two on the denominator, we're going to bring uh, multiply both sides by two. So we're going to get two a times x final minus x initial equals v final squared minus v initial squared. And then all we're going to do is to get this term here, v final squared, what we're going to do is bring v initial squared to the other side. So what we're going to end up with is v squared equals v initial squared plus 2a times the final position minus the initial position. And then here we have our third equation. So I hope this helped you understand how to derive the equation of motion using calculus. Uh, there is another method of deriving that, and I will try and post that soon. So definitely leave a comment if you found this information informative, and let me know what other equations you would like to see me derive. Until then, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.